I'm joined now by India's oil minister, Hardeep Singh Puri. Mr. Puri, thank you very much for your time here uh, with Bloomberg. Let me begin by asking you for your assessment of one of the most important things that India has had to deal with over the last two years, and that is the availability of crude supply through the course of the year, given that we are now seeing a somewhat buoyant recovery in China. Uh, inflation, you know, concerns persist and the Ukraine war persists. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on your show. The last two years, if one has to characterize them with the benefit of hindsight, I would say that we had to face multiple crises. Uh, during the last two years, we hadn't got over the hump of COVID. I'm not entirely sure that we've got over the hump even now, but let's say we seem to be much better placed to deal with the pandemic. In India, we've had uh, close to 220 crore vaccines manufactured and freely distributed. Uh, if you see the economic activity, not only at the India Energy Week, but throughout Bengaluru or India or Mumbai, you'll find that uh, economic activity is not only back to pre-COVID levels, but in fact is way beyond that in terms of some of the fundamental indices which you normally look at when you're making an assessment of economic state. One was the pandemic, but then the pandemic introduced another issue which had to be addressed, and which is that because of the pandemic, a lot of countries put in place stimulus packages, some of them as large as $20 trillion. So when you have um, economic activity either absent or at a slowdown, and on top of that, you have $20 trillion. I'm giving you just one extreme example. Uh, many European countries did the same thing. Then you have more money, lots of money, chasing the same quantity of goods and services. So you exacerbate the inflationary pressures, and you take it slowly but surely in the direction of the big R. Now, it's very reassuring today to be told that um, the recession, when it comes in some parts of the world, will be milder than expected, that the winter was not as severe, but these are all from the elements of nature. Did we plan for it? I think the good story is that in India, we were able to navigate through the multiple crises, and I say food, fertilizer, and fuel. Fuel, because we were able very early in the day to utilize our existing contacts and we buy, let's say, we consume 5 million barrels a day. We had our traditional suppliers, but as the geopolitics changed, over the years, we have gone from 27 suppliers to 39 suppliers. New suppliers have come in. And we were able to source energy. By that, I mean crude. Mm. From wherever it was forthcoming. I think we are today at a situation where uh, we are confident that our existing suppliers, the new ones who are coming on the market, and there are new ones. I mean, let me give you an example of the United States. We have a very close relationship with the U.S. A few years ago, we didn't buy any energy from them. Now our energy supplies from the U.S. have gone up 13 times. We buy $20 billion of energy even from the U.S. And that, that could go up. There are new uh, fines taking place. Uh, we are in talks with other people. Our supplies from Russia which uh, towards the end of the last financial year, I'm talking about 31st March 22, last financial year, we were importing 0.2% from Russia. Today, Russia is one of the largest suppliers. I mean, if you, if you buy uh, and consume 5 million barrels a, a day, you normally have 1 million coming from one place, 1 million the other. Sometimes it comes 800,000, somebody goes up from 1 million. So we are effectively utilizing our growing demand, and on that there is no uh, confusion. A uh, lot of en agencies in the world have, uh, uh, research agencies have estimated that uh, between 2020 and 2040, 25 percent of the growth in demand in the global, globally will come from India. So that 5 million barrels that we consume will slowly but surely go up to 6, 6.5, etc. Will we be able to source it? 
I have no doubt. But we are simultaneously increasing our exploration and production. We have a um, Maneka, um, sedimentary basin of 3.5 million square kilometers. We never went beyond 6% of exploitation. Today I can tell you with great um, joy that we've just released 1 million of that 3.5 million square kilometers, which used to be no-go area, and we've allowed it open for exploration and production. All the major oil companies in the world, uh, without uh, exception, Exxon, Shell, BP, uh, Total, they're all partnering with Indian companies in order to do some prospecting ENP there. Simultaneously, we've improved the, we've increased the biofuel mixing, which used to be 1.4% when Mr. Modi assumed office. Uh, today, we took it to 10% five months ahead of schedule. We had a target of 20% blending by 2030. We brought it forward by five years. And today, the Prime Minister unveiled um, E20 blended fuel. Uh, again, two months in advance. It was supposed to be in April. So I think the India story, whether it is um, ENP or international arrangements, we're stepping on the gas literally on all fronts. Okay. Minister Puri, you seem to have anticipated most of my questions or talking points. Let me ask you a quick few follow-ups. You spoke of supply from Russia. Do you expect it to persist at the same levels that we saw in December? We saw a peak. I think uh, Russia was almost at a million uh, barrels per day of our total requirement of five. So they're right now at about fifth of our uh, I would demand. I would not I don't think that's a serious concern I have what because what no, no no I'll tell Just you what curious no, to know where you know, very, you it's, it's very difficult it's very difficult it's a question of price there we, uh, earlier traditionally I think our um, established suppliers in the top two or three were the Saudis the Emiratis uh, the Iraqis maybe even the Kuwaitis uh, if I remember correctly after um, March of 2022, Russia supplies increased. In between, they went up, then they went down, then Iraq became the largest supplier. So we have a situation where Russia was number two, three, etc. Today, I think the figures that you are quoting are the December or Jan December figures. I think Russia was number one. Whether it will remain or not, I don't know, because I'll tell you two things happen. The cost of, um, we will import from wherever we can, our companies will source it. By the way, 47% of our imports are not done by the OMCs, it's done by the private sector. Right. Which you means you have the private sector, you have Reliance and Nayara, right, right. and you also have our OMCs. All of them, make no mistake, all of them will buy from wherever they can source the most economical. And also, if there's turbulence in terms of, um, you know, problem with shipping, and they will say, all right, deliver at my port, okay? Since you are a large, since India is a large market, it's a third largest consumer, you can afford to set those terms, terms because, um, you know, those who have the energy sources also have to sell them. And India is in a short place where you can sell them. It's not for me as the Indian minister for energy, oil, oil and natural gas to turn around and say, you know, we're the best place you can. It's not for me to say. There are other countries which will pick up, but I suspect some of their supplies and demand are satiated. They are already in long-term uh, uh, arrangements. So how much new demand will you come up? India is sui generis, if I may say so, because the Indian growth is three times the global growth. So I think in India, that's why new possibilities are emerging. And that's why you see this kind of interest also in the India Energy Week. Can you give me, and I know that there are private companies that are doing the purchasing, but of course you know about where they're buying because this is as much geopolitical. They will buy from anyone. They'll buy from Guyana. Okay. So they, will buy, they will buy from, but, look, but, even within the Gulf, even with the Gulf, all right. the, um, the amount of uh, shift that's taken place, let's say in the last few months between one and the other, is very price sensitive. Very price sensitive. Sure. If somebody is charging, a, say, a transportation premium or something like that, they'll shift to the other supplier. As we stand today, uh, are we still persisting to source as much from Russia? And can you give us a sense of what the proportion of uh, the purchasing from the U.S. is as well? You said I, $20 US, billion, dollars, if I remember. Uh, my yeah. last figure, which was I looked at some time ago, we are imports from Russia have gone up 13 times. Right. And I think our last figure was $20 billion. I don't know what the latest figure is. 
but uh, so that would work out in terms of percentage oh, it's a fairly, of a fairly, fairly large amount from zero to twenty billion dollars is a large amount. Okay, so yeah. they are now amongst the top five suppliers. No, not to us. the top five. They're not in the top five, and the energy mix is different. But if you are looking at potential, mm -hmm. it would go up dramatically from there. So you expect the U.S. to become an it, even it could, bigger? It could. It could. It could. Of it course, could. I depend. I understand this is all dependent on pricing, availability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you expect that the U.S. could become a yeah. more significant supplier. Let me introduce a small caveat into this when you're looking at price you're looking at delivered price when you're looking at delivered price you're looking at cost of transportation cost sure. of insurance cost of freight uh, uh, the exchange rate you're looking at refiners margin refiners margin dealers margin will remain the same no matter where you're getting from but if you have to take for instance uh, a supply from a distant source where you have to use an icebreaker. I'm just setting a sure, icebreaker, then the cost is added on to the uh, import. Yeah. It becomes more expensive. Yes. Were, the other party also has to look at um, the necessity to enter into long-term agreements. You see, the, so, sometimes are, are it's Are we spot. succeeding to move a lot more of our purchasing, oh, private sector and no, public I, sector no, to long-term? No, they will do Can that. Can you give us some idea I of what the have, proportion I don't, shift I don't, is? I don't, because they don't come to me either okay. to ask me, where are you importing from? But surely they from? keep you informed, sir. Actually, they don't. Okay. I, actually, they don't. I read the monthly figures when I see them quoted by, uh, you know, the Indian press. Say, in, say, when the January figures come come out, I'll know who's the largest supplier. Somebody has dropped. Somebody's come up. And then when I inquire, I'm told that um, many of them have long-term agreements. Some have renewed the contract. Some are going into long-term contracts, going from spot. Look, energy is not about altruism or philanthropy. No, of course. I so understand. anyone, anyone who tells you that they're doing it for the love of, uh, uh, you know, goodwill or this. No, they have an asset. My position, you have an asset. It's a sovereign asset. It's your sovereign right. You decide uh, how much to sell. We'll, of course, decide how much to buy depending on the price. Sure. Mr. Puri, uh, you met with the Secretary General of OPEC today. I believe while you're here at the India Energy Week, you'll be meeting with ministers from the Saudi, UAE. Uh, are India's traditional suppliers, the OPEC Plus group, uh, somewhat disappointed in, in now having lost, uh, you know, some of that India demand at, to some not extent. Not at all, not at all, not at all, not at all. First of all, I think there's a presumption in there. Uh, uh, OPEC plus includes Russia. So they're all members of Russia. OPEC. Okay, yeah, no, I should let's, let's, myself, let's, yeah. let's say let's say a very simple approach. Uh, OPEC always tells us that uh, they don't determine the price, they only determine the quantity that they release. And that determines price? Uh, well, that's what I think, but I don't need to tell them that. So they uh, haven't expressed any disappointment? Not at all, sir. not at all. They have, some of the OPEC members are very happy because we're buying even more from Could them. Could you share with us uh, any no, more I, I don't, I don't your, think that would be correct. Of your because, meeting with the no, OPEC no, Secretary General? No, no, I have, I have had a very good meeting with the OPEC Secretary General. He and I uh, were on a panel together, number one, <clears throat> we are <clears throat> planning to have a structured OPEC-India dialogue very soon after parliament session. Uh, I've also met today with a large number of ministers, very large. I mean, I wouldn't even be able to count them from countries in our neighborhood, from uh, uh, countries of the ASEAN region, etc. And all of these are, in a sense, one part of the discussions, because they're also talking to our Companies, IOCL, ONGC, sure. OVL. This OPEC India dialogue, could you give us more no, details? No, we have a structured on dialogue with okay, OPEC. That's, that's we have a structured so, so dialogue. It's an with ongoing OPEC. conversation. It's an ongoing conversation, okay, and that. we have a new Secretary General of OPEC. And when I last met him, I said I'd like to invite him. I mean, it would have been, for instance, economically uh, 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 judicious for us to have the dialogue here. But that would presume that he and I have so much uh, spare bandwidth that we can have a. Because the dialogue is not going to be just 20 minutes, half an hour. So I think we decided, and rightly so, that I'll invite him to Delhi for him to be able to have a, you know, he and his colleague Delhi or wherever to have the structured dialogue. No, we are, all the all the dialogues, all the discussions have been very positive, constructive, and I think everybody is looking at issues relating to traditional hydrocarbons and the transition. Sure. So are you confident, given that you know we might see some pressure on prices because of the recovery in China? Uh, the economic recovery is what I'm talking about. Are you confident that given this more recent enhanced diversification of suppliers that India has witnessed, that we will still be able to buy crude uh, if, I mean, at reasonable prices 
if prices go up oh, closer absolutely. to 100 dollars a barrel absolutely. because russia will remain no, a big supply in the market hoping to be able to sell below market right no no they're not below market no nobody will sell below market don't, just don't get that wrong it's very very clear but it has been selling no below market, no right? no 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 you must understand the complexity then it's not like that you see it's like this you have a cost of production okay if along with that cost of production you put say something which is a regional premium or something all right you put it there and the thing becomes expensive we look to buy it elsewhere it is all of it is within a range all of it is within a range that's why sometimes iraq becomes the largest seller sometimes somebody else becomes the largest seller it's quite simple it's not just recovery in place x or recovery in india or recovery in any i think there's also a realization somewhere which people may not admit to that if you allow prices to go beyond a level then you are not containing those inflationary pressures you are in fact exacerbating them therefore a lot of people are now trying to sober up on interest rates trying to bring production back and trying to make sure that oil prices remain within a band because otherwise it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy so you are hoping that the opec will oh, take a hoping. constructive I'm, I'm, view no, of I'm increasing I, china demand no, no, and therefore no, I, I am not you know maybe am, restore some of those production cuts no, i am not hoping i am telling confident. you i am 100% confident okay. that people who are in this business know what is good for the global economy i'm going to take that as a cue given that you met no, with I'm, the secretary I, general today no, no, I, and your confidence speaks in on his own i will meet the uh, sultan jabar tomorrow i will meet the other aramco uh, uh, chief i meet all that but and you're confident that in the oh, face of increasing Ch china months. demand no no i am confident that will come to the market and help keep prices somewhat below because I'll, they haven't done that in the past well well you well, and, and i could have a separate discussion on that okay fine i do have a couple of quick more questions on this issue uh, what do you make of the impact of uh, the price caps on russian crude oil products like diesel and naphtha uh, the assessment right now seems to be that you know refiners in india will stand to benefit because there will be temporary distortions not, in supply I'm not, chain i'm not going to go into those things for the simple no, no, reason not no. the political not the political aspect yeah, will even indian say the market is a beautifully functioning uh, uh, do you see indian refiners standing you know to gain from indian, this i don't know what indian refiners will do i all i can tell you is that indian refiners will look to do what is best for them you have a situation where indian refiners uh, you know when we were faced with the crisis situation what all did we do we put a windfall tax we put an export cess etc we will do what is good for our country what the refiners will do they will take their own economic interests into account okay um an adjacent question to this uh, there were news reports that some purchases of russian crude oil were settled in diram uh because they were no bought clue. from a dubai trader i have no clue i know last year we were talking about a russia ruble uh, agreement if possible so i just wanted to get your no, sense I'll, of i'll tell you manika you know, i have non dollar currency no, no, settlements on, for crude on, because on. that's a very interesting new space so i'll tell you you can look for a new story and i really don't know what's happening <laughs> because you know what happens oil doesn't have its provenance written on its forehead if you find oil let's say hypothetically off the sao paulo basin okay it's bought by a trader where is it sold in latin america is it sold in some other place is it a, how do the payments take place there are established payment channels and then what will people do if they find that they are facing a difficulty somewhere i don't know what they will go and do but as i said if you are asking me officially am i in the know of these payment channels no i'm not i'm not uh do i need to have discussions with different countries involved in putting in place payment channel yes if the need arises we will need to talk as yet you've not no no i've not i have not in any case i don't have to do it it's the central sure, bank I or understand. the finance but of course they will talk to people after all it's not just about energy there is all kinds of other trade taking place with all manner of countries in the world and uh, i don't know i must i I'm just wanted to get your assessment of the scope of being able to expand oil trade into non dollar currencies but i get your I point no, that you making i have no idea but you know the the currency in which you trade is hardly the issue here the issue is something different no it is important actually oh, yeah, is to partly, diversify uh, no, into no, non dollar currencies what what but, people will do whether they will sell in rupees or ruble or dirham or in some other way i want persist no with that question yeah. you were presented with an energy transition report just hours ago yeah. here can you share any highlights with us on what 
road map that lays out. I think, I think what I can tell you is that the gentleman who produced the report, uh, Mr. Kapoor, he used to be secretary in my ministry and right. he and I have worked together. He was, when I was, um, when he was uh, vi uh, vice chairman DDA, I also have the housing and urban affairs. So when he retired some time ago, I requested him because of his um, immense knowledge and he was secretary of petroleum then, because of his immense knowledge to try and look at issues relating to uh, energy transition. So he and other colleagues who've been there, including I think a former ONGC chairman, some others, they sat together and they produced a report. I've only had a, madam, a preliminary okay. sneak preview okay. because the I report have... has just been presented to me today. It's a very interesting report. I, okay. And it, it, it addresses the issues of energy transition from the point of view of an energy professional okay. in terms of deliverables and recommendations which are made to a government. It's not an academic piece, okay? So what I told uh, Mr. Kapoor today when he uh, presented the report, I would like to set aside two or three hours to have a sure. serious, in-depth uh, discussion on the report, not just the authors and us, but the other stakeholders in the system. We'll come back to you with that question a few months down the line. You mentioned exploration, the new opportunities. Yeah, so I'll make this my last question. Uh, you also mentioned a variety of very large international players interested in signing up with Indian companies. Our last few auctions didn't do very well when it came to exploration blocks. We did get some response, but I guess maybe Many, didn't. many of the things so, that I make me confident are either just before or after the last few auctions. Right. And the auction is not the issue here. Here you have they have these big players coming on very big projects, as I named uh, named uh, you many. Said Chevron, Exxon, Chevron, Exxon, all of them. But I'd be very happy to have a separate discussion with you. Has that moved into oh, any very, kind very, of concrete moved, moved, decision moved very well. making? One of them, I don't know which one, is com Exxon is uh, sure. uh, devoting 20% of its super compu uh, super computing time to this collaboration. This gives you an idea of the. Uh, uh, in, 20 to, ex to exploration. To, yes. to exploration in India. Okay, yeah. but in terms of investments, do you have no, but this is, this any is, visibility <coughs> on what they're no. hoping to be able to bring? First of all, first of all, we changed our whole approach. Uh, we, it's not depending on what you invest, etc. Come and find it. We'll even incentivize your the uh, open access. The, yeah. the open assing. Then we'll have production sharing agreement. So we'll have a longer discussion on that later. On the open acre licensing. Yes. But yes. has any of this moved into concrete yes, sort has. of business arrangements yes, already? It, business so? arrangements are at different stages of conclusion and when they decide to make them public, I'm sure they will do so soon. What kind of cumulative will, amounts will, I, do you for, expect it's, it's in terms of investment? Me, it's not for me as the minister to speculate on what two business parties will. And I must thank you for the discussion. <laughs> All right, Mr. Thank you. Thank you very much okay. for your time. Bye.